Hello everyone, this is EdRay1416 here with a video talking about the history of Oreo cookies. Why were they significant in American history? This video is going to explain the first half of the 20th century and the one cookie that preceded Oreo, which many people never heard of before. Keep in mind, I'm going to retain a lot from the original Oreo video and combine it with some new points. With that being said, let's get this party started. Where did Oreo originate from? Well, the story goes that in 1908, a company called Sunshine Biscuits created the first cookie sandwich with chocolate discs and a cream for the filler in the sandwich called Hydrox Cookies. Yes, this is the same Sunshine Biscuits that eventually became the food manufacturer for a popular cheese cracker called Cheez-It. Yes, I used to enjoy those years back. However, Sunshine Biscuits was a small company that could only sell products locally. In 1912, Nabisco, originally known as the National Biscuit Company, came up with a similar concept to Hydrox Cookies with a few changes. This product that was brought to the market became known as Oreo Cookies. This was the slogan when Oreo was introduced to the American public in 1912. Oreo Sandwich. As exquisite in taste as in appearance, National Biscuit Company. Back then, you either advertised in the newspapers or on the billboards. However, Nabisco was a nationally recognized company with strong marketing tactics. Thus, on March 6, 1912, Oreo cookies were introduced to the American public. As time went along, people discovered Hydrox cookies and called it a ripoff of Oreo. Eventually, Hydrox was discontinued and Oreos became the number one cookie for the next 50 years. Now let's go to an article that makes me want to cry in misery. The change of the Oreo recipe in 1994 came on the heels of complaints by the Jewish and vegetarian community. Why? Because from 1912 to 1997, the main ingredient of Oreo cookies was lard. Why was this a big problem to Jewish and vegetarian communities? In the case of the Jewish people, lard is pork fat, which is not kosher. Anything from a pig is not kosher for the Jewish. As for the vegetarian community, lard is of course considered an animal fat, which goes against their views on valuing animals in general. From 1994 to 1997, Nabisco was at a transitional period having to replace conveyor belts and blowtorching to clean off the forbidden materials such as lard. A rabbi used a blowtorch to clean out the machines while conveyor belts were being replaced which cost $150,000 each. That means Nabisco spent millions of dollars during those three years to make the factories safe for Oreo cookies to be made and distributed to both the Jewish and vegetarian communities. Rather than using lard as the main ingredient, Oreo ended up using partially hydrogenated vegetable oil in 1997. What was the unfortunate event that happened after the lard was taken out? Since oil didn't have a flavor, Nabisco changed up the Oreo recipe once again by adding a lot more sugar in the Oreo cookies. This proved to have gotten Oreo sales up not only because the Jewish and vegetarians finally got to eat Oreos and not violate their dietary code of honor, but everyone else started eating more Oreo cookies. However, there was a bad side to this as well. Why? From 1912 to 1994, the start of the transition. Taking out the animal fat lard meant that the leptin in the brain could not get any signals to tell you when you were a fool. For the Gentiles and omnivores watching, pay attention. Lard is an essential animal fat not only for flavoring vegetables, but also for flavoring desserts. Back in the old days before the heart attack panic of the 1950s, everyone used lard for cookies, cakes, pastry, and other things. When Oreo used lard as their main ingredient, it made the Oreos taste very good. If you dunked the Oreo flavored with lard and full fat milk, you had a satisfying snack and hardly anyone gained weight back then. Compare that to the 1950s when medical doctors said lard is the cause of heart attack deaths or the 80s and 90s when the low fat diet was in full swing. Lard has a lot of monounsaturated fat. It is an essential fat that keeps the brain sharp and signals the satiety hormone called leptin. And that was why Oreo cookies were good before the transition in the 1990s. Removing lard from Oreo cookies was as bad as removing beef tallow from McDonald's fryers and replacing them with vegetable oil to cook the french fries in. Yes, there were stories about how crispy and tasty McDonald's fries were before vegetable oil replaced beef tallow. Since then, the fries are limp and not very tasty. You could cover the fries in a barrel of salt and it still would not have a good taste. Now you know why Oreos do not taste like what they did 23 years ago. How is lard beneficial to the human diet, fellow Gentiles and omnivores? I'll show you. One of my favorite examples is of course that eating lard fights depression. Thus backing up this poster of a happy family in the 1950s. 
Or how about this poster of a lovely young couple in Great Britain? Again, monounsaturated fat is important to the diet, and I agree that it tastes great. I cook my eggs in pork fat, vegetables with pork fat, etc. Heck, you can solidify lard and make lard sandwiches and be alright. But wait, we aren't finished yet because the Oreo recipe changed again. In January 2006, Nabisco changed the Oreo recipe from partially hydrogenated vegetable oil to non-hydrogenated vegetable oil. Why? Because Nabisco realized that the main ingredient to the Oreo cookie contained a lot of trans fats, which can script the leptin, the hormone that tells you when you are full. Those trans fats and plenty of sugar jolts a hormone in your brain called ghrelin, a hormone that tells you when you are hungry. A complete 180 from the days when Oreo used lard as their main ingredient. Because of the switch to non-hydrogenated vegetable oil, Oreo prices skyrocketed. Last I checked, the average price of an Oreo pack is $4. Compare that to $1 before the transition in 1994. This proves two things right here. Number one, Oreo which had lard tasted good. Number two, Oreos were a lot cheaper when they used lard. And from personal experience, rendering your own pork fat is much cheaper than buying a standard sized bottle of vegetable oil or a tub of shortening. All you gotta do is consult your local butcher, ask if they have pork fat, ask what the price is. If they give up pork fat for free, then you are a lucky person. Pork fat is profitable today. Bottom line, if you want to have Oreo cookies with the lard as the main flavor, you have to make your own Oreo cookies from scratch. But if the following viewer is Jewish and hates modern day Oreos, you can always use real butter to flavor your Oreo recipe. Not only is that good for you, as much as lard is for the Gentiles, you can say goodbye to using shortening and oil. As far as I know, there are only two animal fats that are considered kosher, real butter and chicken fat, which in the Yiddish culture is known as schmaltz. Yes, as a Gentile, I have rendered chicken skins and made schmaltz out of it. And that is your history on Oreo cookies. To recap, Oreo cookies were made in 1912, four years after Hydrox cookies were made by Sunshine Biscuits, the current food manufacturer to cheese it. From 1912 to 1994, the main ingredient in an Oreo cookie was lard until Nabisco got massive complaints from the Jewish and vegetarian communities. Then Nabisco spent millions of dollars replacing conveyor belts and blow-torching machines to clean the traces of unclean materials. 1997, Nabisco was completely kosher and free of animal fat. 2006, Nabisco changed from partially hydrogenated vegetable oil to non-hydrogenated vegetable oil. I hope you learned something about Oreo's history. Sure, I didn't give the complete timelines, but how a popular cookie got altered and became more popular with customers. Anyway, this is EdRay1416 with a revised video on the history of Oreo cookies. Thank you and good day.